the end. I now invite Prime Minister Emerald Farrell Peters to lead us off in prayer. Good morning to all. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, this time and this hour as we join together on this platform with this worship session today. We pray, oh God, that your Holy Spirit presence will be felt and we pray, oh God, that all hearts and minds will be touched by this act of worship. This we ask in no other name, but in Jesus' mighty name, amen. Seasonal sentence on page 34. I will put my spirit within you and make you follow my statutes and be careful to observe my ordinances. Blessed be the Lord our God, by whose grace we are yet alive. Blessed be his Son Jesus Christ, by whose rising we are set free. Blessed be the Spirit of God, in whom is our hope and our joy. And we pray together. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. And we say Christ to pass over. Christ to pass over has been sacrificed for us. So let us celebrate the feast, not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, once raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no dominion over him. In dying, he died to sin once for all. In living, he lives to God. See yourselves, therefore, as dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. 
Christ has been risen from the dead, the first fruit of those who sleep. For as by man came death, by man has also come the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forevermore. Amen. Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. And so in a moment of silence, we bring before God those things we know that we have done that was not pleasing to him. And so we say together, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life to the honor and the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The kingdoms of this world, they have become the kingdoms of our Lord in Christ. And he shall reign forever and ever. Hallelujah. The Lord reigns. The Lord
Now of the Psalm. Psalm 97 is found on page 595, 596. The Lord is King. Let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of the isles be glad. Clouds and darkness are round about him. Righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne. A fire goes before him and burns up his enemies on every side. His lightnings light up the world. The earth sees it and is afraid. The mountains melt like wax at the presence of the Lord, and the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. The heavens declare his righteousness and all the peoples see his glory. Confounded by all who worship carved images and delight in false gods. Bow down before him, all you gods. Zion hears and is glad. The cities of Judah rejoices because of your judgments, O Lord. For you are the Lord most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. The Lord loves those who hate evil. He preserves the lives of his saints and delivers them from the hand of the wicked. Light has sprung up for the righteous and joyful gladness for those who are true hearted. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous, and give thanks to his holy name. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. First reading. A reading from the word of God, taken from the book 1 Samuel, chapter 6, verses 1 to 16. The Lord of the ark, uh, the ark of the Lord was in the country of the Philistine seven months. Then the Philistines called for the priest and diviners and said, What shall we do with the ark of the Lord? Tell us what we should send with it in its place. They said, if you send away the ark of the God of Israel, do not send it empty, but by all means return him a guilt offering. Then you will be healed and will be ransomed. Will not his hand then turn from you? And they said, what is the guilt offering that we shall return to him? They answered, five gold tumors and five gold mice, according to the number of the lords of the Philistines. For the same plague was upon all of you and upon your lords. So you must make images of your tumors and images of your mice that ravage the land and give glory to the God of Israel. Perhaps he will lighten his hand on you and your gods and your land. Why should you harden your hearts as the Egyptians and Pharaoh hardened, excuse me, hardened their hearts? After he had made fools of them, did they not let the people go and they departed? Now then, Get ready a new cart and two milch cows that have never borne a yoke and yoke the cows to the cart, but take their calves home away from them. Take the ark of the Lord and place it on the cart and put it in a box at its side, the figurines of gold, which you are returning to him as a guilt offering. Then send it off and let it go its way. And watch, if it goes up on the way to its own land, to Bet Shemesh, then it is he who has done us this great harm. But if not, then we shall know 
that it is not his hand that struck us. It happened to us by chance. The men did so. They took the two milch cows and yoked them to the cart and shut up their cows at home. They put the ark of the Lord on the cart and the box with the gold mice and the images of their tumors. The cows went straight in the direction of Beth Shemesh along one highway. Lowing as they went, they turned neither to their right nor to the left. And the Lord of the Philistines went after them as far as the border of Beth Shemesh. Now the people of Beth Shemesh were reaping their wheat harvest in the valley. When they looked up and saw the ark, they went with rejoicing to meet it. The cart came into the field of Joshua of Beth Shemesh and stopped there. A large stone was there. So they split up the wood of the cart and offered the cows as a burnt offering to the Lord. The Levites took down the ark of the Lord and the box that was beside it, in which were the gold objects, and set them upon the large stone. Then the people of Beth Shemesh offered burnt offerings and presented sacrifice on that day to the Lord. When the five lords of the Philistines saw it, they returned that day to Ekron. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The benedictus. The benedictus. Blessed are you, Lord. Okay, go ahead, Carl. Go ahead, Carl. Blessed are you, Lord God of Israel. You have come to your people and set them free. You have raised up for us a mighty savior, born of the house of your servant David. Through your holy prophets, you promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our forebears, and to remember your holy covenant. This was the oath you swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous before you all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you shall go before the way of the Lord to prepare the way, to give God's people knowledge of salvation by forgiveness of their sins in the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine upon those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. A reading from the Word of God, taken from the book of Luke, chapter 21, beginning at chapter 21, verse 37, and continuing to chapter 22, verse 13. Every day, he was teaching in the temple and at night he would go out and spend the night on the Mount of Olives, as it was called. And all the people would get up early in the morning to listen to him in the temple. Now the festival of unleavened bread, which is called the Passover, was near. The chief priests and scribes were looking for a way to put Jesus to death 
for they were afraid of the people. Then Satan entered into Judas, called Iscariot, who was one of the twelve. He went away and conferred with the priests and officers of the temple police about how he might betray him to them. They were greatly pleased and agreed to give him money. So he consented and began to look for an opportunity to betray him to them when no crowd was present. Then came the day of unleavened bread on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. So Jesus sent Peter and John saying, go and prepare the Passover meal for us that we may eat it. They asked him, where do you want us to make the preparations for it? Listen, he said to them, when you have entered the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house he enters and say to the owner of the house, teacher, the teacher asks you, where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs already furnished. Make preparations for us there. So they went and found everything as he had told them and they prepared the Passover meal. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The teacher asks you, where is the guest room? where I may eat the Passover with my disciples. He will show you a large room upstairs already furnished. Make preparations for us there. Luke 22, 11 and 12. A guest room for Jesus. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our Redeemer. And we pray, O God, that as we hear these words, we too would prepare that guest room, our hearts and our homes, for the return of Jesus Christ. Amen. Many home buyers today have set as a priority a guest room for future visitors, be it relatives or friends. Quite often, this guest room is a place that the house owner takes great care to make sure it is as neat, clean, and welcoming as possible. This is done to have the guest or guests feel as comfortable as possible to feel at home. I can recall as a young child, seeing a wall plaque in many homes, which read, Jesus, the unseen guest. And there was one line in particular, which always intrigued me, or even sometimes caused a fear in me the silent listener to every conversation. And so, being such a young child, I was careful about what I said because I didn't want Jesus to get vexed with me for saying anything bad. You see, I was called a chatterbox when I was small. But if I went to a house and saw that wall plaque, you would hardly hear me say a word. Such was the awe I had about the thought that Jesus was present in that house and was listening to everything everybody said. 
And so I ask, what preparations have we made for Jesus to be our house guest? Or do we think that he's only present in the house of God, the church building that we attend every Sunday? If we say, as the Bible says, he will never leave us or forsake us, then surely he is with us. The Holy Spirit is with us, even in our homes and more so should be in our hearts. Maybe our lukewarmness, like the people of Laodicea, have blinded our spiritual eyes from seeing or sensing his presence in our homes and our hearts. How come, you may ask? Well, in Revelation chapter three, verse 20, it is written, here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and sup with him and he with me. So there was Jesus in that upper room sharing the Passover meal with his disciples. And we also remember the last supper in the upper room where he shared a meal, which we today call the Holy Eucharist with them. And so I ask again, what preparations have we made for Jesus to be our house guest? The questions that we should consider are, is Jesus the Lord of my home? Is there room in my home for Jesus? Why such questions? We have heard from a young age, charity begins at home. And so, if we are to carry out the Great Commission in Matthew 28, 1920, surely we must begin in our homes. We are well aware of the, prov of the proverb, the adage in the Proverbs chapter 22, verse six. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Children learn what they see. Have they seen us, the adults, make Jesus our priority? Have we taught them the, the importance of making Jesus their priority? I am sure you all will agree with me that many of the incidents happening in our society today are as a result of the lack of sound parental and spiritual guidance. I ask again, what preparations have we made for Jesus in our homes? Where in your home do you meet him for that one-on-one -on -one interaction? I am sure many of us remember our parents, at least I do. I remember my, my parents morning and night, kneeling at the bed, saying their prayers. We hear them at times. And they made sure that we too said our prayers morning and evening. And it was a culture shock to me when I went to a school in Port of Spain to work some years ago. And I couldn't believe my eyes. The children didn't know about closing their eyes to pray. You didn't get that reverence from them. They looked here, there, and everywhere. And it showed me then that parents were lacking in bringing up their children in the fear of God. Jesus has gone back to the Father but he made us a promise. I go to prepare a place for you, that where I am, you may be also. 
Shouldn't we do the same? By preparing a place, not only in our hearts, but more so in our homes, so that we can stay connected with him. As John 15, 5 states, I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Staying connected to Jesus is a full-time activity. It doesn't only happen on Sundays. Therefore, there is need for meaningful spiritual preparation for Christ Jesus to be the ever present guest in our homes. We must live the Christian life at home. If we mirror the behavior of the Pharisees at home, that is, appear holy and righteous in public, in church, but display quite the opposite at home, don't be surprised to hear these words on Judgment Day. I know you not. And we realize that some of today's youth, they question our behaviors. Even at church, we show that some of us are not really grounded in the word and have the fear of God in us because some young people see us as hypocrites. We behave one way at one time and another way at another time. And you hear some young people talk about what ha happens in their homes. And yet when we see some of these people at church, they appear so holy and righteous. And these are things that are turning away some of our youths from God. And not only that we will be held, things will be held against you for being hypocrites or for putting up a show for people because God is not mocked and he will not be fooled. Saints of God, let us do some soul searching. Don't let us be spit out out of the presence of God because of our lukewarm attitude to God like those people in Laodicea. It's either you are hot or you are cold. There is no middle ground where Jesus is concerned. There is no middle ground where salvation is concerned. If our Christian faith is genuine, our home life will greatly impact those around us. I say that again. If our Christian faith is genuine, our home life will greatly impact those around us. If our Christian faith is genuine, our church life and the people in our church will be greatly impacted. Let's listen to these words from Matthew 5, 16. In the same way, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. For your light to continue shining, we have to stay connected to the vine, to Jesus, such that those fruits mentioned in Galatians 5.22 will be evident 
in our lives. Fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, gentleness, kindness, faithfulness, patience, goodness, and self-control. These will allow people around us to see what God's followers are capable of, and as such, how God is glorified. You see, we were created to worship God, and such worship ought to be done in spirit and in truth, both at church and at home. As I'm sure you always hear me say, our Bible is a handbook for living right. Jesus said that the most important commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Matthew 22, verse 37. How then does your family, do your family members see you start your day? We know it's a busy time. A lot of people are working, working very far. They have to get up very early. But that does not prevent us from starting our day right. Not many families are able to practice morning devotion together. But even so, I am sure many people, or many persons do see their parent or their parents start off the day in prayer. If not at the bedside, maybe in that special room or corner. The Psalmist David in Psalm 5.3 states, in the morning, O Lord, you will hear my voice. In the morning, I will order my prayer to you and eagerly watch. Worship at home is just as important as worship at church on Sundays. And may I go so far as to say, at times it can be considered even more important that daily worship at home than what we do at church. And why do I say that? You see, if we only worship Jesus on a Sunday, what happens to the rest of the week? What holds us together the rest of the week? What do we have to hold on to? Do you see why? Daily worship, daily meditation and prayer and Bible reading is just as important as that Sunday worship. So Sunday worship alone is not enough. Though it is necessary for communal purposes, as it brings us together to share in the Eucharist and to be emboldened in our faith and belief in our triune God. Is Jesus the Lord of our home? Keeping the guest room for Jesus requires constant diligence and vigilance, especially so if there are young people in the home. Some actions of young people can cause friction, frustration, upheaval, when elders, parents, or otherwise, try to maintain a Christ-like spiritual atmosphere in the home. For example, what type of music and songs are being played and listened to by your young people, by our young people? You see, boundaries have to be set. Parents and grandparents must do this. Yes, such actions may not be popular, but they are necessary. We can't love our children or grandchildren too much to the cause of their detriment. 
the presence of demonic forces from some of the music that they listen to, the anger issues that they develop, unacceptable behaviors that they develop from listening to some music. Those bring much pain and heartaches to family. Look at what happened to Eli, that priest and judge in ancient Israel. Eli loved his sons. He loved them so much that at times he did not do what he was supposed to do. The Lord accused Eli of not being responsible enough in the way he handled the wrongdoings of his sons, who were both priests, mind you, Hophni and Phineas. And you can get the whole story in 1 Samuel 2, 12 to 34, and 1 Samuel 4, 12 to 22. You see, Eli's two sons were involved in extortion. There was a ritual with the burning of the sacrifice, and there was something that they had to do with the, with the meat and with the fat, and they decided to do it their own way. They wanted to eat the meat. And for that, God was displeased. And they were also involved in sexual immoral immorality with the woman, the woman who gathered at the entrance to the tabernacle. So you see, even though they were priests, they too fell short. They were involved in extortion and sexual immorality. As a result of Eli's neglect of his parental responsibility, the Lord informed him that he and his son would be cut off from God's favor. The verses that I told you to read, you will, from them you will gather that both sons Hophni and Phineas, they died on the same day when they went out to fight. And when Eli got the news of their death, because he was inquiring, you know, what, has, what happened to his son? What happened to them? So he got the news of their death and even more, the loss of the ark of God. And on hearing this news, Eli fell backwards and broke his neck. This is not to scare you, but this is to let us know that we have a responsibility in our homes for making Christ Jesus, the Lord of our homes. This account should deepen our resolve to maintain a household that would honor and worship our Lord Jesus always. As Joshua said in Joshua 24, 15, but as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. There is a saying that the hands that rock the cradle rules the world. The hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. So it is imperative therefore for us to recognize that both parents, father being the head of the home and mother being the nurturer in the home are responsible for the physical, emotional, and spiritual nurturing of our children that we have brought into the world. They are not ours. God has loaned them to us. It is of great benefit, therefore, to have a godly input in our homes 
that would encourage our young children and youth to have a passion for Christ. In Deuteronomy chapter 11, verses 18 to 21, it reads, fix these words of mine in your hearts and minds. Teach them to your children, talking about them at home and when you walk the road. Write them on the door frames of your houses and your gates so that your days and the days of your children may be many. Again, if we look at what's happening even right here in our country, so many young people dying and because of killing one another and all because they have lost their way, many of them don't know Christ. That is why it is important for us to daily put on the armor of God. And it's also important for us to plead the blood of Jesus, not only over ourselves, but our children, our neighbors, our country, especially as we see the day of Jesus' second coming, coming nearer and nearer. So let us clean up our houses. Let us prepare a place for Jesus to dwell in our hearts and in our homes. So today, if you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Let him enter to sup with you and your loved ones. As the two disciples, Peter and John, found out, when they got to the room, it was prepared, just as Jesus predicted. So all they had to do was to get the meal ready. So let our risen Lord and Savior find us prepared to accept him in our hearts and in our homes. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen.
the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord, reveal your love among us that we may know the joy of your salvation. Grant peace within and among all nations. And teach our leaders wisdom. Endow your church with faithfulness. And her servants with knowledge and true godliness. Defend, O Lord, the rights of the poor and the oppressed. That your justice may be known among all people. Lord, Renew your spirit within us. That in us and through us, your will may be done. And so we see the colic for proper seven. Oh God, our defender, storms rage about us and cause us to be afraid. Rescue your people from despair Deliver your sons and daughters from fear and preserve us from all unbelief through your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Colleague found on page 45. Lord God Almighty and Everlasting Father, you have brought us in your safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Pray for the diocese. O oh God, by your grace, you have called us into this diocese to a goodly fellowship of faith. Bless our Bishop Claude and retired Bishops Clive and Calvin and other clergy and all our people. Grant that your word may be truly preached and truly heard your sacraments faithfully administered and faithfully received. By your spirit, fashion our lives according to the example of your son and grant that we may show the power of your love to all whom we live through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And today in our decision cycle of prayer, we remember St. Christopher Separia with the Reverend Father Aaron Charles and the Reverend Agnes Charles Bacchus are ministering. We also pray for those who travel. May God grant them traveling mercies. Our intercessions for the sick. Heavenly Father, 
give of life and health, comfort and relieve your sick servants, Felix Morris, Cheryl Paul, Lucetta Thomas, Barbara Camps, Lynette Wilson, Margaret Prentiss, Helen Nathan, Stephen Rewan, Cheryl Motley, Audrey Payne, Tyreek Tewitt, Terrell Tewitt, Noah De Pair, Eileen Manswell, Franklin Jerome, Errol Seeley, Linda Seeley, Shaquille Esdell, Janet Nurse, David Pollard, Rupert Noel, Father Eric Thompson, Deacon Winston Roberts and his wife, and Edna Lawrence, and all others who require our prayers. Give your power of healing to those who minister to their needs, that those for whom our prayers are offered may be strengthened in their weakness, have confidence in their loving care, and experience your healing grace through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Intercessions for the departed. Almighty God, we remember before you today your faithful servant, Dalan Seely, son of Reverend Deacon Dr. Patricia Seely. And we pray that having opened to him and them the gates of larger life, you will receive them more and more into your joyful service, that with all who have faithfully served you in the past, they may share in the eternal victory of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We continue our intercessory prayers. Pray for strength. May the strength of God pilot us. May the power of God preserve us. May the wisdom of God instruct us. May the hand of God protect us. May the way of God direct us. May the shield of God defend us. May the host of God guard us against the snares of evil and the temptations of the world. May Christ be with us, Christ before us, Christ in us, Christ over us. Be our salvation, O Lord, be always ours, this day and forevermore. Amen. Prayer attributed to St. Francis. Merciful God, to you we commend ourselves and all those who need your help and correction. Where there is hatred, give love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is sadness, joy. Where there is darkness, light. Grant that we may not seek so much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving we receive, in pardoning we are pardoned, and it is in dying we are born into eternal life. Amen. Prayer number 14, found on page 79, prayer for the parish. Almighty and ever-living God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, hear our prayers for this parish family. Strength the faithful, arouse the careless, and restore the penitent. Grant us all things necessary for our common life, and bring us all to be of one heart and mind within your holy church. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Prayer number 25, found on page 82. Prayer for our homes and families. Heavenly Father, 
who is the son, Jesus Christ, born of a woman, sanctified childhood and shared the life of an earthly home, bless the homes and families of our nation. Give to parents a true sense of responsibility in the care and training of their children, that our boys and girls may grow up in the fear of your name and the fellowship of your church for the glory of Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray for our children. Father, we bring our children to you for your blessing. Help us to be sensitive to their needs. Give us wisdom in our care of them that they may grow up rooted in love, steadfast in faith, strong and courageous in life. Guide us and all who have the care of children. May we never hinder, but help and encourage them towards independence and maturity and to a living faith in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Prayer number 28 for young people. God, our Father, we pray for our young people growing up in an unstable and confusing world. Show them that your way give more meaning to life than the ways of the world, and that following you is better than chasing after selfish goals. Help them, O oh Lord, to take failure not as a measure of their worth, but as a chance for a new start. Give them strength, O oh Lord, to hold their faith in you and to keep alive their joy in your creation through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Prayer number 32, the presence of Christ. Come to us, Lord Christ, in your understanding love, when all around us seems dark and unseen, when our faith is low and we cannot feel you near, and we find it hard to pray. Come to us then, dear Lord, as you came to your disciples in the darkest hour of the night and let the light of your presence dispel our fears, renew our trust and bring peace to our hearts for your tender mercy's sake. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our path, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit. And in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And so to all those who are celebrating birthdays, anniversaries, or special occasions, we pray. God of all creation, we offer you grateful thanks and praise for the gift of life. Hear the prayers of those, your servants, who recall today the day of their birth and rejoice in your gifts of life and love, family and friends. Uphold them with your presence and surround them with your love, that they may enjoy many happy years in good health, peace, joy, and happiness. And may all of them be pleasing to you always. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A warm St. Andrew welcome to you all and a special welcome to persons worshiping with us for the first time. The parish office is open Mondays to Fridays, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. You may call or WhatsApp the parish office at the numbers there, 
4922-2157 or 4925835 or any member of clergy. Reverend Father Eric Thompson at 6839676. Reverend Winston Roberts at 4848352 for any further information. The parish checking account remains the incorporated trustee of the Anglican Church in the Diocese of Trinidad and Tobago, St. Andrew Parish Cooper, the account number 10008001254252527. It's still asking for persons wishing to be confirmed, children and adults, Kindly submit your names to the parish office in order for the parish to set up classes and a date for confirmation. Baptism as the gateway to Holy Communion. The third leaflet was sent out on Saturday morning. Um, any persons not receiving these emails can message me with your name and your email address. 684-4828. Remember to double check your email address before you press that send button. St. Sylvan Church will be hosting on Wednesday, 5th July 2023, an open air mission service, 6:30 p.m. at their car park. Our dear Reverend Ike will be your celebrant. Preacher. And on Friday, 7th, and 7th July 2023, they will be hosting a youth seminar at 6 30 p.m. at the church. Father Aaron Charles will be your guest speaker. All this is leading up to its annual Thanksgiving service on Sunday, 9th July 2023 at 10 a.m where Father Augustus Thompson will be your celebrant preacher. Please note, there will be only one service in the parish, and that will be at St. Sylvan Church in Cartachima. All are invited. Bible study continues with Reverend Ike <clears throat> and Sister Jeanette Perez at 6.30 p.m. On Tuesdays, that's the day. Password is Bible, all capital letters. And the meeting ID is 891-995-5172. Our virtual services continue Tuesdays and Thursdays. Next service will be on Thursday 29th at 6.30 p.m. Just before we, sorry, just before we play this hymn, let me just um, say that this week we have a new brochure out that speaks to baptism of Jesus and our planning sessions continue every Monday night at 8 p.m. You come out and join us to hear more about this baptism at the gateway to Holy Communion, it's becoming more and more exciting. Thank you, Rev.
let me thank those persons who have contributed so well this, this morning. Mr. Shirley Young Lewis, Mrs. Barraza, Rigel, Mr. Carl Williams, and Mr. Ray Riley, and a special congratulations on that message from the Minister Emerald Peter Farrell. Thank you very much. And thanks all of you for tuning in this morning. Thank you very much. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us evermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so may we look around our house and see, can the Lord visit us? Is there a guest room for him? Let's make room for Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Worship team, Kai, Deacon, Minister Farrell. Thank you for the message. You're welcome. All Thank you. you. Supported worship today. May God continue always to use us for his glory. Thanks for your message. I especially would have shared that not only in church, but especially to new couples, asking them to make that space for Christ in their own. God bless. You have a wonderful day. Oh. Yes, thank you, Rev. Same to you. And again, good morning, all. We have come to the end of our service this morning. Do have a spiritual day. It's a bit bleaky outside as I look through my window. Um, so be safe if you're traveling out to work. And have a blessed day, all. <laughs>